Can you uh, hear me right? Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Right, my name's James. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about a few projects I've been doing. Um, my startup is called Chat Now, uh, My personal blog is at UNOP.co.uk. Come check those out. I'll talk to you more about that later. Uh, a bit of background about me. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer by training, but I do software now. So, uh, just a lot easier to get things done quick. So, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, how to reduce the energy consumption of computers, uh, so PCs, Mac, workstations, or anything. Uh, so there's a few options there. You can either replace them with low power devices, so if it's an always on system, replace it with a computer that consumes less power, uh, use them less, but then there's a problem there, how do you know when you're using them, how do you know when you're wasting all the power, how do you know when they're not in use? So I'm going to talk about three projects today. Uh, first one is an electricity monitor that I bought from Atlas and hacked about with. Uh, the second one is using Raspberry Pi's power digital design play screens, like plasma screens and a foyer. The third one is to use a power monitoring, which is the startup I'm running, uh, which is just outside. So, business. Uh, this story starts with a trip to Matt then. And I went to Matt then and I saw this product. Uh, it's 13 pounds. Uh, it's a standard electricity monitor, but it has this download data feature. Uh, here's one of the reviews from a website. I'll just uh, <coughs> <coughs> read this and let it sink in. I apologize for the grammar. That was very helpful from Gary. I didn't see this before I bought it. So he spent over an hour. I mean, I've spent considerably more than an hour. <laughs> Here it is. I've got it with me if you want to. There's the box, that's the open box. Uh, there's a mini CD there, it's fantastic if you're a slot loading things for it. <laughs> uh, when you do power up the software, it looks like this. This is a splash screen. Two options, yes or quit. <laughs> this is, I think this is a classic case of hardware guys doing software. Someone was roped in to do this. It's like, you're the only one who knows how to program, write the software for it. Um, it's badly translated and you know, uninsurative. I've got some few more examples. Uh, the main problem with this is it's Windows only, and the biggest problem is if you run this on a PC, kind of it's just running all the time, monitoring your power, and that's a bit ironic. But <laughs> sort of having this power hungry computer on to monitor your power state. <laughs> no, we can do better. So here's one of the screens on it. It's a fantastic bar graph. <laughs> 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 Here's another one where they obviously bought 100, we'll put 100 at the top. Lots of white space there. I don't know what happens if it goes above 100. <laughs> Hopefully, I can't use that. Uh, and there's this one, which is a, a live electricity beam, uh, which should show a trace when you plug it in and it just downloads the data continuously from the meter. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's super buggy. And it just it dies after five minutes, come back, it's better to trace than that. Two screens. So. No. Oh. <laughs> so there's a few options there. So get some better hardware. There's a device called Current Cost. I don't know if anyone's familiar with it. Uh, it's they're quite common. And there's a website called Current Cost Packing, uh, where there's lots of sort of open source drivers and things, and they're yeah, very open. This thing's not like that at all. It's completely closed. There's no documentation or anything. Uh, I couldn't find anything about it. Uh, so just give up. Take it back. No, we'll have a, we'll have a go. Make some tests. So the third option is hacking into the world. Uh, this is the one I went for. Spending far too much time on this thing. Reverse engineering and reinforcing the software. Uh, so I picked a product for Raspberry Pi to run the software on because it's very low power. Unfortunately, it means it doesn't run Windows, so I can't run software on it. So it runs Linux. I'm going to have to reverse engineer how this thing works and re implement that in something that will run on it. So I, I rewrote the software in Python with an HTML5 and JavaScript content. And it, so I was expecting the difference. <laughs> this continues on. Um, so Linux is much better. Windows, you have to install the driver for the USB to serial converter. Uh, whereas Raspberry, the default distro, it comes with uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, you just plug it in, it works very well. 
you can talk to the device. Yeah, yeah. connect to Siri report in which works. Uh, that doesn't mean you know what's going on, you still gotta you know, reverse engineer the application protocol there and work out what the application is doing. But you can talk to the device and the ports work. So that makes sense. <laughs> So here's a picture of it. There's a uh, back the, the transmitter. Uh, it's not the battery panel unit, it's a current plant, but very maintain the uh, first transmits every seven seconds to the receiver, which is the thing on the left. And um, as a display, the standard for the egg carry around your panel to see what the thing's using. But then it has a USB cable, you can plug it to the Raspberry Pi, and then there's a Wi Fi on board, but plug it to the network as well. And then that continues to evolve to the data. So the output of that looks a bit like this. Uh, this is one it's on. It's quite high fidelity, you can see what's going on. I think that's uh, an oven or a washing machine. You can see the thermostat of the machine, what it's working on and off, does it sort of try to maintain the temperature? Here's another one. This is actually the, uh, the motor inside the fridge freezer. So you can see quite a lot of detail here. You can see the motor turning on and then carrying down at the end. And there's even a big spike sort of to the right hand side where you can see the inrush current from the motor there. So there's quite a lot of high frequency data here. Uh, even made an iPad app. Uh, so this aggregates the data over a point graph and groups it by hour, works out how much it's going to cost. Uh, so you can just see yeah, a bit more user friendly rather than having all that sort of you know, high frequency data. So if you want more info on this, there's another talk online where I go into more of the technical details about how I reverse engineered it. Uh, that's on my blog. Uh, you can read the post as well, it's a good write up, and all the code is open source on GitHub. So have a look at that. Uh, this is the second thing I'm going to talk about. So another use for rock device is um, display screen. So say you have a black screen in a foyer or you know, an LCD TV around. You use them a lot to um, sort of show people where things, what things are going on in the day, the agenda, you know. There's lots of applications for this. And traditionally these are sort of powered by computers. You just have a PC running all day long running a PowerPoint presentation or a website with just a long VGA cable going to where the screen's mounted. And yeah, that's not really it. <coughs> There's a uh, lot of noise on the signal, so you get a lot of, sort of fuzziness on the screen, and sometimes it will just start scrolling because it's looped the, uh, the synchronization there. And you're generally running a you know, full screen web browser there, someone knocks the cursor or something, you're going to get a point of error or a toolbar or a login point or something. But the main problem is of course the power consumption. So you have a computer running all day long, it's probably not even shut down at night, and it's burning away, just displaying a static image on the screen just to tell people where to go. So you can do much better with a rock device. It draws less than one watt. That's better signal quality, it's right behind the TV, directly mounted on there and uh, plugged into the digital connection. And much lower power consumption. Uh, so we decided to give this a go and sort of try to do this. Lots of the ways you usually found along the way, sort of making sure the cursor doesn't display, making sure the screen doesn't go off, you know, automatically booting into a full screen web browser just to make it recoverable if the power goes off, it recovers. So there's a write up there on the blog at uh, shutdownscanner.com blog, uh, which goes with the point of how you have to get it up and running. You know, we found all the problems you don't have. Uh, and it works really, really well. So here's the third thing I'm going to talk about today. So if you have a large office, um, how many people know if their staff just turn their computers off at night, lock the screen, go home, come back next day, it's still on, they don't care, it's not that hard. Uh, but how do you know how many computers are left on at night? How do you know how much it's costing you? Uh, I don't think many people even sort of have a grasp on this to work for me. They don't really care about it. But somewhere I used to work, they would actually send someone around after hours, the person locking up the building would have to do a quick survey and just look at all the computers and just see if there's a light on. So like, that's pretty low tech. I don't know if there'll be a better way of it. So I just built this service called Shutdown Scanner, which is a cloud service. You install a very small daemon on one machine on your network and it monitors which machines are on. It's that simple. And you don't need to install it on every workstation. And it just pings all of them and says, hey, these are up now, and then just send the data back, and then you can do a lot of analytics on there, storage with mail for you, and graph it all. And uh, just show you the ways, and show you where you can improve. So here's some screenshots. This is the uh, home page. You can see there's a big red line at the bottom. <laughs> so that's just the graph of an office. So you can see peaks in weekdays, and you can see 
the lulls that, but it's not going down to zero. Some people are just, there's a baseline load there which could just be turned off. This is the dashboard, this is where you know, all the data comes in. There's two lines here, there's that red line which is previously showed you, and then there's the green line which is what we think you should be looking at. So the green line is if you all your staff turn your computers off at the end of their working day and start them up in the morning, it would just be straight peak. You wouldn't have all that waste in between all the, all the peak. Also got a uh, real-time display here. So this is just the base data. And this automatically updates. You can put this on a sign. So as I said previously, you can have Rob I or something else driving a display screen and showing people how good you're doing and how many things you're turning off. And it'll show you the last couple of weeks real-time updates to see how many computers are on in your office. And there's the app as well. There's this iPad app that will aggregate that together. So it'll tell you your cost in pounds per day. You can see here there's some lulls at weekend, but it's still costing you six pounds a weekend. People just leave them out and get You can also have a real-time dashboard here. So just open it up and say, hey, how many computers on your way home? Just tell them my staff turn their computers on. How much is it going to cost me? And then you can obviously aggregate the data if you like. So this one here is aggregated by months and instead of days. And just working out the cost, feeding it, combining that with the tariff that you're on, working out the cost to you. And then you can not showing that together with your gas and just piece of shape. So, current status, shutdown scan, uh, and beta testing state. Uh, hopefully going to launch full service soon, and possibly redesign the look and feel of it, make it look a bit more appealing. Uh, the core technology works really well, though. so that's been pretty uh, hardened and tested. So, the technology that collects all the data and feeds it back into the system is, is just how we have a look at how we display it. So, if you're interested in trying it out, get in touch, um, take a business card with me later on, uh, I'll just go to the website. And, and please try it out um, before we start shopping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's the end of the talk. Uh, I'm looking for help with uh, sort of branding, marketing, uh, promoting a lot of things, sort of getting it out to people, getting people.